Milan Jones. And now we're back on the trail again, this time to St. Louis, to meet up with JT to head to Kalamazoo for a civil righteousness conference. Hey, here we are, heading to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Got Mira in the back. <laughs> Over here. What's up? What are you doing? Man, we're trying to figure out this music because you can't you can't travel without the right tunes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. You gotta get the music right. That's right. <laughs> or it's right here, and Molly's driving in the front. Is that Jesus commands all men everywhere to repent, and the reason why is because Jesus modeled for all men everywhere how we're to live this life, and how how we're to navigate through the turmoil, the problems of this life, how we're to deal with humans um, in a fallen in a fallen world. He, he lived it, he walked it out sinlessly. And so he becomes our model for how to how to navigate this world um, in the face of injustice. And, and that's really what civil righteousness is. It's cold out here. It is about 34 degrees, but we are walking inside a building, so we do not freeze up, you know what I'm saying? JT is about to talk, so we're about to uh, wire him up, and then we're gonna go and uh, finish up this talk about civil righteousness. This spirit of error assaults the body by creating divisions among us that lead to offense. This offense erodes our ability to love and therefore to wield the authority that we've been given by God for engaging the powers and principalities in the realm of the spirit. Morning. About to go speak at a chapel service. Get some breakfast. Get some breakfast. The body is not in alignment with the universe this morning, y'all. Dang. Here's JT talking at Stetson's Chapel about the civil righteousness message. Here's me and Lawrence talking about perspective in the Become movie and how it changed our perspective. And finally, we hit up the River Church with JT as he uh, spoke that message and we had a worship service and a lot of fun stuff went on there. Next day, there was a symposium and a talk of Nina Simone. Basically, he is the grand nephew of Nina Simone. And he talked about how that bitterness really caused her, she was very talented, but that bitterness caused her to actually go into schizophrenia. So, main topic, don't hold on to bitterness, y'all. Let it go. Well, it's been a long day. This is the end of the session for Nina Simone. And now we are, I guess, going to do some wall building. How am I? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. My feet done, hurt. You know what they say, hurt feet, burnt cheeks. What? <laughs> it was so awesome meeting all these cool people, Julie, Tammy, Jesus Loves Kalamazoo. Right here, we're having a symposium right after the Nina Simone talk and uh, talking about the different things that has uh, occurred in America and the healing that needs to go on. All right, we got Cal Kadan right here. What it do, what it do? How with we a, doing? With a it's fashionable the style. <laughs> yes. Are you two related or boyfriend yeah. and girlfriend or something? How, do we look related? <laughs> mm, yeah. Do I love we? how the two go together. <laughs> sorts. Get it, get it, get it, so get it. So what is this? It's the silver blob. The silver blob. <laughs> I'm not sure. What do you think it is? <laughs> it looks like somebody's arm. Maybe like a flex. That's not. I wanna see you do. Friends that are with me are both creatives. One is a dancer. One is a writer, author, playwright, singer. Uh, and so they're taking all of this civil righteousness messaging to develop uh, creative presentations, films, and and uh, plays, and music, and dances, and stuff to carry this in a creative way on the Underground Railroad tour. Here's Mark Lawrence and I, and basically he was showing us his warehouse where they do Kalamazoo Ministries. It's a big warehouse, and he even offered us some free rent space. So I'm like, hey, I might have to move to Kalamazoo, you know. <laughs> Here's a 
us getting some grub at food dance. You know I'm about that uh pad thai. Yeah. So finally before leaving out, we went to this beach. I think it's called Union something. <laughs> yeah. me to be sent and launched into the culture. Children like arrows in the hands of the Father, they will not be put to shame when you contend with your enemy in the gates, the gates of influence. So we named our youth ministry at the church, Arrows. I just finished designing an internship for our summer interns called the Arrows Summer Internship. God began to speak to me about how out of St. Louis, he was going to launch arrows all over the world and that he was going to use me as an arrow to sink, to, to be sunk into the heart of racism in this nation. I'm in the car with you guys and we're talking about a movement, basically an arrows movement. And we're talking about create, create, uh, being creative and using media and the arts. In other words, we're talking about the stage. And then you said, is it going to be an RV? And I saw a great bus in my head. And I was like, absolutely, it's going to be a big like tour bus. And when I said that, I saw a gray bus. Now we're driving and I see a gray bus that looks exactly like what I saw in my mind. And it said, arrow stage lines. It's the arrows, the creative arrows on the tour bus being launched, polished, sharpened sword. My mouth is a sharpened sword. We have the word of God has been sharpened, polished into a creative presentation and then launched into the highways and byways to, to be sunk into the heart of racism in this nation. 